Kitu, please, can you hear us now? Okay, we will start today's session then. So, just an update, you know, uh, I have been getting uh, emails from you on your queries over the weekend, but I had not been able to check those because I was traveling over the weekend. So, uh, after this meeting, I will check your queries and I will reply you back on email. Okay. So, We'll start now with uh, yard management. So last week, you know, we discussed yard management. We discussed a setup of yard like this, and like this, we have checkpoint doors, parking areas, and how the movements takes place within the yard. So today, we are going to create all these uh, elements, and we are going to see how yard works. Okay, so. First, before we start using our management, we need to activate your management for warehouse. So it's even though we activate, even though it's optional, you know, even though it's activated, it's optional for you to use uh, yard management or not. So even if you activate yard management, you can you know, opt whether to do a receipt or good issue with or without yard. But you don't activate this, you will not be able to do any yard activities. So this is the first setting which we need to do in shipping the saving cost process setting. Then let us create storage types. So if you see I was saying there is a storage type of yard. So this these are all our storage type, right? So we'll create another storage type for this section which is yard. So Why are these unwanted storage type and good thing? Okay, let's leave it and move to first page sections. So we already have a storage type in the name of the yard. Okay, we'll copy this. Okay, and take create a new storage type with uh, New name, yeah. One, uh, yeah. Eight. So we give this name. Then we can see for the yard storage type, you know, point to note here is that that's a rule G, which means it's a yard. Then next is we need to create these sections. I told you the parking, the checkpoint. Okay, so we are under this part now. Okay, so we we'll create sections. Section for inbound door, section for outbound door, section for checkpoint, section for checkpoint A, section for checkpoint B, section for parking spaces. Okay. 
So So such checkpoints are already created for why are he just copy them for our storage type yrt hit okay so this sec is section for checkpoint in checkpoint r doors for inbound doors for outbound okay let's say this way we are considering okay, in one so section we can create many doors in same way in one uh, parking space section we can create many bins of parking okay so we'll save it I think we will create some bins now in the yard area. So this section we are into. So in this we will create a checkpoint and all of the bins. Okay, let's give some name. This is in storage type YRD eight section will be checkpoint here yeah? in so we are creating bins because the stock is always stored in bins. This is checkpoint in, this is checkpoint out. So we we'll create just one door here yeah, for inbound one for round one. Okay, just to make it simple. So door in this is the section. And then door out. And then we get two or three or maybe one parking space also. So parking underscore and underscore one. We can create as many parking spaces as we want. We can depending on our space and the warehouse. Space two. Okay. Same way now we'll create parking space for out. Just let us have a quick look at the bins that we have created now. So 
So two parkings for inbound, two parkings for outbound, and inbound over and outbound checkpoint. Now let us do some more settings here. So in the master data shipping and receiving yard management. Here we define checkpoints. Okay. First, you know, this is the same config where we define storage type. Define yard using storage type. So this is the same one. You know we copy storage type. So this entry automatically gets mounted. So we will not have to do anything here. So by storage type, all the settings we are copying the storage type. All settings which are relevant for yard will you know automatically set. So either you set it here or create a storage type here. So we have done it here. Then we have created sections also. I add the eight. Okay, then we create checkpoints. So this checkpoint that we have created So we have created bins for checkpoints. So now we are creating check checkpoint as in uh, configuration entry. So this is checkpoint, and then there is a master data where we assign this checkpoint to the bin that we created. Checkpoint north, checkpoint south. So what we will say copy this. We will say checkpoint I, checkpoint O. And then there can be only one checkpoint for inbound, one checkpoint for outbound. So we. So for inbound we assign the storage type and that is checkpoint. This is the bin. You know, we created a checkpoint in bin or the checkpoint. We created a checkpoint is a configuration entry here. So now what we are doing is, you know, we have created bins for all this. Now we are we create a configuration entry for the door, configuration entry for the checkpoint, and then assign the bins. So parking, there is no configuration entry, separate configuration entry. Then assign those bins to those uh, configuration entries, right? So the checkpoint we created, we create a separate checkpoint. Then assign the bin of checkpoint to the checkpoint configuration. Okay, same way we create a door and we assign the bin of you know, the door to the storage type, you know, or to the uh, bin that we created at the door um, to the door, you know the element door we will create. So this is element you know we are creating now and assigning the bins. So one more you need to mention here is 9999 because whenever you move the stock at checkpoint what is the process type system is going to use? So it's going to use 9999. Then, so we created bins in storage type yard. Then we created element, you know, configuration element of checkpoint and assigned the bin of checkpoint to the configuration element. Then now we are going to create door and assign the bin of storage type yard to the door. Okay. So see here you can see assign door to yard bin. Something like this. Uh, door, face here. Sorry. Uh, 
Is it like uh, we have only one to one relation we have uh, within checkpoint and storage bit? Sorry? Uh, do we uh, only have one to one relation for this? Uh, from uh, for this. Uh, Sorry. Yes. Hello? Your voice is not clear. Your voice is not clear. Can you please repeat? Yeah, I was just saying that uh, do we have one to one relation between checkpoint and the bin? Yes, yes, yes. One checkpoint is equal to one bin. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, if we have a multiple checkpoints, then we must create a separate bin so for, for each bin yes. for each storage, uh, sorry, each uh, checkpoint. Checkpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For each bin. Thank you. Thank you. So idea is you know the how many point of entries you have in the yard. So those many checkpoints you create. Any checkpoint will have a separate bin. Because you know they are physical separate physical location, right? They are represented by separate bins. So then let's go to our door. So define door. So So we have we just create two doors over here and delete some existing doors. So these are compilation element. We saw this, you know, at the time of uh, initial creation. So do write for inbound default staging area is 9010. That is GR zone. Do out 9020 GI zone default staging area. I created one door for inbound one for outbound for the warehouse. And I'm just going to delete the unwanted doors that we have here. So you can create as many doors you want, or uh, in one, you, what we are going to do is, yeah, we are going to assign each door okay, to the bin. So yard door means this is eighty wells and bin is in. So here in the same way we are assigning like we did a checkpoint. Okay, if you don't then then we are assigning bin to the door. So currently we just have two doors. One for one one for one. So you can create as many doors you want depending on you know your physically how many doors are there in your warehouse. Okay. This way, you know, we complete all the settings on the on the side of uh, um, yard yard side. Now we need to link this yard to our storage types. Yeah. Let's say in where are the storage types. So we link that using doors. So this this part of the door is done. In yard, we created these doors. Now we create bins in storage type doors and then do the assignment. So if we go to storage type, you know if we remember we have storage type nine zero three zero which is having the role of doors. Okay. So this is representation of door, the door that we created now. It's it's a representation of the door on the yard side. Okay. Yeah. 
now we are creating a door we will create a bin of door again that will be on this warehouse side you know this is the yard store side this is warehouse so the presentation of the door on the warehouse side so if you imagine you know the door here it can be seen from here also in the yard it can be seen from here also in the uh, in the warehouse right so let us call this as warehouse and let us call this as yard so it can be seen in the warehouse also so we have to create a representation of a door in the warehouse also because this is the connection point between yard and storage type. So what we are going to do here is we will use the same storage types 9030 for doors of uh, you see 9040 for doors of good issue. Okay. So we are now going to create bins. In this storage types and then we link those bins. So, those okay, I'll just give some name which is very issues related load in or receipt okay, and the other section will be the one I guess and then load out so now we created door pins same door we are creating two bins right one we created on the yard side and one we created in 9030 and 9040 okay. now we have to go and link them So here you can see, you know, here I am assigning to the door a bin on the warehouse side. Okay. Same way, you know, I assigned a door to a bin on the yard side. Okay. Yes. So in this way, you know, we complete all our settings. And we have we have assigned the door element of door to a bin on this side and a bin on this side. Okay, so these are both the master data settings here and here. Okay, so this way we complete all our configuration. Let me quickly run through the screenshots just to see you know, if I have not missed anything. Okay, we created storage sections, we created checkpoints created doors and then we created bins as well in yard and then 9030 then we assign the bins checkpoint to the checkpoint bin we assign the um, door to as well yeah we assign the door to the bins as well okay so now let us check this now how it works so let us check it for inbound Okay. So we will take a delivery.
this is in the in one delivery so first we'll see how the material is received with in one Some available quantity. So let's say I receive 50 pieces here. So I just put into soil location 1000. Okay. Now um, there are, as I said, there are three ways to create a truck or a trailer. So our aim now is to create a truck or trailer on which you are going to get the um, uh, yard activity is being processed. So this truck or trailer, you know, we can create in this delivery. Okay, so a truck or trailer that we will be creating now will need, you know, a means of transportation and means of transportation type. Okay, so either you can enter these two things here. Okay. So let me show you how our transportation unit is. So in a transportation unit I told you it represents a truck or a trailer on which you will be loading our stuff. So you can create it the other way is you can create it manually in either way. So one way is you know you need a means of transport, a direction and then now. You need means of transport, okay? So we create means of transport and configuration like it's a truck or a trailer. The same way of means of transport if we want we can pass it from e e ECC and then packaging material is nothing but uh, means of transportation here yeah. and that is the packaging material. So packaging material is uh, empty area. Okay, so if you see this MTR So I was explaining you, you know, uh, this TU is nothing but, you know, it creates, it, it's all your handling unit. It. it kind of, you know, creates a uh, handling unit for you. Okay. So basically this packaging material, in, you basically system uses this packaging material, you know, to create a, a TU is basically, it, you know, we see an uh, element called TU. But in the background, you know, the system structure, tables, and all the elements of EWF system, they use, you know, uh, this packaging material to create a handling unit. So whatever you material pick, you put it in a trailer. So trailer, we see trailer as TU in the foreground, but in the background, this TU is nothing but a handling unit. Okay. So TU is seen, but in the background, it's a handling unit created with this packaging material. Okay. So here you can see it's a packaging material type is given. So the packaging material type we just mentioned that this is not a normal packaging material, a pallet or container or a uh, box. It's a it's for means of transport. Okay, so that is why we can only see MTR in the drop down here. Okay, so these are two ways you can create your TUs. One on the ECC side, one on the EW side. Okay. So while creating delivery, if you want simultaneously TU to be created, so you mentioned this entry there. Or else, you know, there's a third way, we save the delivery. Did you save a delivery here? 
and then you know we create a shipment in VTO1 and okay so I have I mean if in your company you are using shipment so I haven't created any shipment transportation planning time shipment ability for our warehouse but yeah if you are using shipment in your company on the sales side then you create a shipment and through shipment output you know shipment output uh, IDO gets generated you know there is a standard IDO for creating DU from shipment and it goes and creates a DU here so the output you know in the shipment basically we can group multiple deliveries okay, so shipment can be grouped multiple deliveries so automatically those deliveries will be grouped together here okay. so that's the third way these are three ways for creating you know uh, team via shipment via inbound delivery efficiency or via inbound delivery why are TU transition in the EWM side? PRD, I can just see if we have received a delivery or just kind of stuck something. Okay, so this is the delivery that we receive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the delivery manually here. So if you have created shipment and assign the delivery, or you have created, you know, created shipment, assign the delivery, and move the shipment to the TU here, it will automatically have the delivery assignment. Same way, if we create TU via VL31 and in ECC, we give that means of transport to ECC. So this will automatically have here. Assignment here. So we are going with a manual approach. So we will say send delivery and we will give a document number. Give the actual document number. Give the assignment. So let's say you know this is one truck or trailer which is coming from the customer, right? So the customer tells you that hey Rohan, I have uh, this is the license plate number. This is the vehicle license plate number. This is the route. This is the departure date. So whatever information they give you, it will be it here. Okay. You can. This is the license plate number, the vehicle number. The person who is at the gate can also search this. You know, based on the license plate number. This delivery. Okay, so when the vehicle comes, he doesn't know the T U number. He will enter the license plate number, and he will be able to identify the T U. Okay. So this, let's say for example, the vendor tells us that he has sent us two deliveries, not one. So we we'll create another. So we we'll create another delivery here, and then we we'll assign it to the same team. So you can see two deliveries have been assigned and we save it now. So that's done, you know, your document is ready, the vehicle is ready now. So let's say once it comes at the gate, the person at the gate will search as for the you know vehicle license plate number, you will see this you verify up to two deliveries and how many you choose. So you will see okay, two many you choose are there. You verify that and check all the people work. These are the edges for both the deliveries, okay? So then you say, okay, let us go ahead for the receipt. Uh, let us go ahead for putting it in the warehouse. So what he'll do is he'll say, checkpoint, how I will to save. So I told you, you know, there are various separate transactions, you know, given by SAP. So I'm just going to use this TU transaction, slash NCWMTU, to do all the processes. 
we have separate transaction to carry out each of these processes like we can do a check in check out using CISO you can do yard movements by you know you can, you can the user can the yard user will only have access to check in check out in this transaction the person who moves the stock in yard will have wide move so I'm not going to go separately in each of this transaction I'll be you know popping those transactions from here okay so let's say checkpoint you say uh, it will save So you can see the status is planned once you say active, once you say it arrived at check fund, the status becomes active. Okay. Then you go from here into yard movements and you say that yeah, I want to move it from checkpoint inbound to see it's coming to checkpoint inbound. So you can move it to a door or you can move it to a Parking area. So, a yard storage type. We can say that we want to move into parking for some time now because the space in the warehouse is not available. So here you enter your process type, okay, and you create a task. Then you say confirm we are tasking background. You save. You can see. It's in the parking now. So let us check on the monitor. In fact, our cube the monitor. So this is the TV now, and you can see what all the stock it has. Okay, looks like you know since you have not done Google CT, it is not showing us the stock on the TV. Let us go into yard and see. Number of TUs are one. The number of warehouse requests in the TU are two. Okay, this is a high level information here. Then we can see transportation units in yard. This is the transportation unit. This is the delivery assigned to it. These are the delivery items to it. These are the handling units to it. And this is the status of it. That, yeah, it's a, it's a touch of point. Okay. And then here you can track all your movements for your team where it went. So it went from Checkpoint okay, to the parking. Then let us now go and move it to the door. Where you know, once the door is available, the main aim is to move the stock to the door. So once the door is available, then you can do a loading and loading operation. So it's a pre door, we need a pre door to now. We create a task okay. and then we confirm the task. And there you can see it's now moved to the door. So at the door, you know, you can 
do a unload okay. and then you can do a good receipt here only in this transaction only okay. or you can do it by the delivery transaction I mean we don't have an option of good receipt yeah we have it here so at TV level also you can good receipt okay. at TV, TV level also you can good issue so I'm just going to say and load finish It's basically you know trying to create a task. Mm -hmm. Unloading, you know, from so unloading will unloading is going to create a task. Unloading is you know, it's trying to create a task from you know truck or trailer here to the to to the you know, truck or trailer which is at the door to nine zero two zero or uh, nine zero one zero sorry nine zero one zero point one condition the GR rule okay so it's trying to create a task and then. So, mm -hmm. if we want, we can directly also receive the handle notes. So, in one process, receiving of handle notes, receiving by team. Okay. We enter the two number over there now. Low in more. Okay. We have one zero seven handling net. Set one handling net. I see and load. To the high to the ETR. Yeah. So you know you can do the receipt of your pallets okay, one by one. So once you, you know, receive you can see the you need to just and put this status set over here okay so one by one you know you can receive everything and then ultimately what we'll get is the entire delivery is completed okay so what I'll do is just to save time I'll just show you one on RF gun I'll just see the entire delivery So I've just skipped unloading step here and then the receipt of the entire delivery. Okay. And now you know, the person has unloaded 
and he we received his chance for the stock. Now the vehicle has done this uh, job. Okay, so now now once you unload and once you do, do the Google see the stock is lying now at the stock is now lying at the GR zone, right? So what you have to do is, um, you know, you have, your truck uh, trailer has become uh, empty now. Okay. So now you have to move this truck or trailer out of your yard or out of your warehouse. Okay. So again, what we we'll do is do a yard movement. So this truck or trailer is now empty. Okay. Move it to now a parking bin, a outbound. Yes. It will stay there. It will wait for you know some of the. Okay. It will lie there for some time, maybe. Uh, wait for the um, um, you know the gate to be available for going out. Okay, or it can wait there in the outbound parking until you know there is some outbound truck or trailer waiting for to be shoot. Okay, so it can wait there. Some some truck some uh, outbound shipments when they are once they arrive, so it can move there and. Loading can be done on the truck or trailer. Okay, let's say we don't want to use the same truck or trailer for our bomb. What we do is we move it to now checkpoint. Okay, but now we we'll move it to the out out checkpoint. We we'll move it out of the way also. Yeah. I'm not confirm immediately. No, let's go to task. You can also confirm immediately. That's the error. Mm. Let's check this to this that is stopping us. And basically it needs the unloading to be completed. Actually we have so many, you know, uh, warehouses. We have so many uh, handling units. It is difficult to, you know, unload one by one. Let me try some other way. I can create tasks and put them in warehouse, you know, so the uh, unloading status will not be valid then. Okay, so I put them in existing warehouse uh, storage type. So we should have taken less quantity, you know, so this delivery is completed, same way I am just 
So going into series three. If from the two, it is going to series three. So now I think I should be able to so, so the unloading is completed. So now I'll be able to move it to checkpoint. Yeah. So I'm going to move the checkpoint up. And I'm going to confirm the task. You can see now the stock is at checkpoint out. So if you recollect, you know, initially when the TU came, the status was planned. Once I, once I checked it in the VR, it was changed to active. Now you can see now when the vehicle goes out, now you have the parking in the door. We have moved it to the checkpoint. So now the vehicle is at the checkpoint. Okay, and I'm going to say checkpoint departure to save. Still has stopped. Let us try and put away everything. Okay, it has stopped. Okay, let us see which stop the T is having. The monitor will show us if something is pending still. There is one handling you know. Why it is not being put away? Okay, one task we want to confirm it seems. Should be able to move it out. So you can see the status is completed. Huh? Uh, so it's checked out. So now this yard processing is completed for your truck. It's, it's you know, kind of gone out of the warehouse and the complete process of your truck is completed right from receiving to coming to a yard to going out now. So in outbound there is just one thing is you know instead of unloading we do loading. Okay, at the door 
and then the same movement from door to station, from door to checkpoint, checkpoint to parking, you can do, and then finally check out. Okay, so we empty vehicle comes in, you keep it in the parking, then you take it to the door of our bond, to the loading, and then after loading you move to parking, and then from parking again you can move it to your uh, checkpoint, and from there you can do a check, good issue. So, you know, uh, this is how, you know, we go through yard management. We see some more scenario of yard management when we take our next topic of processor and distress control. There we will see some more scenarios in yard. So, I just skip, you know, the task creation for unloading or loading. So there we will create tasks and we will confirm the task as well. Okay. So, that will be, you know, like, inbound with four steps or inbound outbound with five steps. So when we do it in number of steps we you know kind of uh, create tasks. We will be try to do task creation and confirmation for loading and unloading. So we just saw one complete inbound process is the We will see outbound processes they are in for USC. Okay. So this is this is where we end our topic for yard management. Tomorrow we will start a new topic on process within the storage control. Okay. So any questions on yard management? I mean I have attached the word document which have each and every step that we have done here today. Okay. And you can go through that and try out for yourself. So the pending questions that I have uh, from you on email I will reply to that. I will start answering them now. Okay. So, any questions for the end for today? Hi, Ron. Yes, W. Uh, if we don't have yard, uh, then we can go with the same process uh, like door and parking area, but we don't have to mention no. the yard. Yeah, see, if you if you, if you are using yard, then these all activities can only be done with respect to yard. If you are not using yard, then you, you know, directly go and PRDI and do a good receipt like we used to do before. So if you don't have yard, these processing of yard movements and everything will not be applied to you. Um, but we have to assign the door 1, door 2, to warehouse 2 and the uh, TU creation with warehouse. Sorry? But we have to assign the door 1, door 2 for warehouse also. Uh, because warehouse also have door and it should be unloaded and loaded from that door. Correct. correct. Yeah, see, you will be uh, able to, you know, assign a door. So, you are unloading and unlo unloading and loading. Okay. Your loading and unloading will be created. You can do a loading and loading without yard also. But this loading and loading will not create a task for you. See, when loading and unloading is, um, is you know, the difference between this unloading and unloading and the loading and unloading we do from our, uh, you know, yard to you. Loading is just for the, for the sake of completing the status here. It does not have any other impact. But that, this is called a simple unloading. But that is the actual unloading. What we do here is, you know, we we kind of in this what we do is we create tasks for unloading, and we confirm tasks. Create tasks means we are taking the stock from the uh, do TU, sorry, from the TU to the GR zone. Okay, so we are creating tasks. In that case, there is no TU. It's just simple status unloading, right? Here we do the movement. I mean, in our next session of you know, um, PUSC, I'll show you the task. I have just skipped the task creation here because we don't we have that complex unloading or complex loading is only possible with PUSC. So basically, we'll see the task getting created from the vehicle TU to the door. So sorry, to the staging bin. Okay, so your vehicle comes to the door, the stock is on the vehicle. The HU, yeah, we saw 179 was on the TU. 
So you move the stock from the TU and you place it into your GR zone or GI zone. Okay, so that is called as complex and loading. So, so for that we don't so need the data. What for which process? For complex which you are mentioning just now. Yeah. So that yard is must because your T will only come when you have yard. Okay. But in real time we have yard or not like in warehouse you are working with projects so we have yard management. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, we do have a lot of yard processes in the warehouse. Okay. It Thank is you. So widely used process. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Okay. All right. So we we'll end the session for today. No further question. We we'll catch up again tomorrow for our next topic. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.